Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about what makes a successful business. Is your business successful? Do you think that deep down in your heart? What makes it successful? Well, we're going to talk about that, so make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. You'll see that there's 200 plus episodes of me saying that exact same phrase. Hopefully it's better than a cat video, and hopefully you want to watch a bunch more episodes because we got a bunch more episodes for you to watch. Over 200 episodes, all 30 minutes long, and some of them are even halfway all right. Uh, no, make sure to go back, watch that, uh, listen, however you do. Um, go back, check them out. If you are one of the cool kids, like the stickers say, then that means you watch every episode. You thumbs up the video if you're on YouTube. You make sure to comment on the video on YouTube. By the way, we've been getting a lot more comments, uh, just people like checking in on YouTube. That's awesome. It helps the algorithm and it makes me feel awesome. So definitely do that. Thank you for all you cool kids. And if you are one of the, uh, by the way, it makes you a cool kid only if you order through me because that's how I make money. <laughs> that's my job is putting in orders at windowcleaner.com. So if you would like a rep, and I know you would because I'm awesome to deal with, at least that's what I've heard, uh, please do let me put your orders in for you. 862-312-2026. That's, that's my cell phone. It gets you right to me. You can even text me because that's what most people do. Shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Make sure you're logged in, but just throw it in your cart overnight, whenever you think about it, and then let me pull the trigger on it. It costs you nothing extra. It's like a super amazing high five of awesomeness, and uh, I think David was the one that said hot dogs, might have been. Might have been hot dogs, I think was the last one. Name brand hot dogs. Yeah. I've also gotten K-Cups. Uh, anyway, whatever you think that I can buy with the oodles of money I make off of your order, please do let me know, uh, because it's fun either way. If you are one of the cool kids, you let me put your orders in and all of that fun stuff. You watch everything and shameless plug number two, you subscribed to the American Window Cleaner Magazine, the most awesome magazine for window cleaning in the entire world then, uh, yeah, you become an epic cool kid. By the way, the new cool kid stickers are out, and they're going in orders. If you let me know you want a sticker, I'll throw one in there. By the way, I don't have any on my amazing board of awesomeness quite yet, but uh, they're on my way to me, so either way. Okay, enough shameless plugs. I'll probably add one or two more in there <laughs> throughout. But somebody asked me the other day, like, how do I make money? I was like, uh, by putting orders in? They're like, no, no, but like, how do you make money if you don't charge me any extra? Like, how are you? What do you do for a living? And I'm like, I am a sales rep for when? Anyway, so if you don't understand, that's what I do. I am a sales rep, but I do these podcasts to kind of help people. Anyway, super odd, but I'm not making fun of you if you're watching. I'm just saying uh, it was a very odd question. But today on Nation, we are talking about what makes a successful business. Now, the word successful is one of those things that is completely subjective. Like you could think you're successful because you got your first check, your first storefront, your first anything. Somebody paid you something for the first time. That means you're now successful. And I totally get that. I still have my first check on the wall uh, downstairs in my, we have like a, it used to be called the ping pong room, but now it's just a big shuffleboard. Uh, there's where my bass guitars are and piano and a bunch of instruments. Anyway. I have it on the wall, still my first check ever. Because to me, I was like, yeah, I made it. And that may be your definition of successful. You may be a $5 million company doing $5 million a year, not thinking you're successful. It can totally, totally vary. And I'm not here to tell you you're wrong or right. I'm just talking about what I think makes a successful company. And it's not what you think. It really, really isn't. There's a lot of people. And let me let me preface this. If you're on Facebook, uh, which I know a lot of you are, if you're not, check out uh, Pro Window Cleaning, Pressure Washing Resource, uh, Window Cleaning Newbies, I think is another one. Into the Flow is a good one. Um, there's just a bunch of different Facebook groups. 
We'll use Pro, for instance. Pro window cleaning has like 18,000 window cleaners in it. 18,000. Of those 18,000, I'm guessing 18,000 of those people think they're successful. And that's cool. The big thing is, is that when you're on Facebook or any other social media platform where you're talking about what your company does to people who have the same company, the problem is, is that people make more, I'm trying to say this tactfully, people lie. People make everything seem amazing when that's not really the case. So a lot of times when you start a company or if you're existing, you go on there and you're like, dude, this sucks. Look at all these people, man. This guy's making $480 an hour. No, he's not. He's he made $480 in one hour potentially because he overpriced something and got it or whatever. But that's not what it is. There's a lot of people out there struggling. But you want to know something? Nobody jumps on and says, hey, I'm really struggling. What can I do? Because then everybody jumps down and be like, you should be better. Maybe it's time to get a job. And no one ever posts anything like that. So I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, it's just for show on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, by the way, because there's so many newbies out there, tell us something in the comments that sucked in the past couple years for you. Tell us uh, a bad thing that has happened to you in the comments down below uh, if you're on YouTube. That way these new people can see that there are window cleaners, successful window cleaners, that also have crappy days. But successful does not just mean what you think. There's a lot of things that have to do with successful, and I am a huge proponent of strength over success, right? Meaning um, I consider a company successful when it's strong. And there's a lot of different things that go into that. Let's get right into that. The first one and the number one thing that people sometimes forget, especially when you're online, is that profit is first. Profit is number one because it doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter your amount, it doesn't matter what you make an hour, it doesn't make any of that. None of that matters. Because if I pay a tech $200 an hour and he brings me $200 an hour, I am making $0 profit, right? The big thing in profit, and there's a book called Profit First, it's awesome, it absolutely is going to change your life if you haven't read it yet, so definitely check that out. If you're not a reader, go to like Audible, do that. But a big thing in profit first, and just profit in general that people don't quite understand, is that a lot of times in a business, they take everything, they reinvest everything, or they feel like they should, they kind of give themselves something, and then they just reinvest everything they can. Instead of slating profit. Slating profit and working around profit. Now, it doesn't mean that either way is wrong. And there are people who are in growth mode and they just reinvest every dollar that they possibly can in advertising, EDDM, everything to build this thing up. Awesome. That right there, if you're in heavy growth mode, you may be eating ramen but doing, you know, $1,000 days. People don't understand that. Oh, you got to be rolling money. No, 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 no. Do you know how much all this stuff costs? Right? There's growth mode, there's riding mode, and there is uh, decline mode. All of those. Riding mode basically just means that you are gotten it to a certain level and you're riding it. Right? Decline mode is pretty obvious. You're in decline. But profit has to come first. Now, for me, a successful business is one that has a healthy profit. Now, profit does not mean that's the part you pay yourself. That's not profit. Profit is the money left over after everything and everyone has been paid, including yourself. So a company, if you're going to pay yourself $50,000 a year, right? Perfect. That's a fine, fine number. You're paying yourself $50,000 a year. Anything above that, all your expenses and everything, you still have in your bank account an extra $10,000 a year. $10,000 a month, $10,000 a day. It doesn't matter. That's the profit. Profit always, always, always has to be in the positive. A lot of times what people do, especially when they're smaller, is they take everything, they reinvest it, and they just don't pay themselves as much. You're in growth mode. That's super awesome and very, very important. But it doesn't mean you're being a successful business, right? 
Successful means there's profit. Profit comes when there's a plan. Plans have to be in place. Marketing plans. Everything has to be in place so that you can then show the profit at the end. Profit is going to be a bigger, more valuable thing than anything else in this whole scheme of things, and that comes to successful business. Let me get, I'm, I'm going to say the second most important thing. I'm going to tell you that the first important coming up. But another thing that has more importance to a business is strength. The strength in a business, it does not matter. Listen, you know the stuff we're talking about now? Think to yourself. No one's around. No one can hear what you're listening to. Think in yourself, how strong of a company are you? Think about that. Are you a strong company or are you just big or are you just having, you know, you're making money? Doesn't You're not working for somebody else and you're not in a cubicle so you're successful. Fine. But how strong is your company? And what I mean by that is strength in a company. You can increase the strength of a company. If you're small or you're big. If you're a one-man show listening to this, what's up, by the way? How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, but if you're a one-man show, the strength of your company means how strong are those customers of yours? They love you. They're never going to leave you. Do you have some customers that you only make like 50 bucks an hour on because they're just a pain in the butt customer? Get rid of those. I want to see all of your customers being extremely high profitable customers who love your service, love your company, and would never, ever, ever want to go anywhere else. If you could somehow hit that, or that every single person you do, everyone, don't lie to yourself. You don't need to tell me and you're not on Facebook, so don't lie to yourself. Think about it. Every one of your customers is a fan, not a customer. That's strength. I've had this. Every year we fire a handful of customers. And it's not even... It's not even a fire thing for the most part. If they're a pain in the butt or they're not worth the time or stress, I'm going to drop them. And I'm talking maybe three in an entire year. But a lot of times what happens is when you first start off in business, your pricing's not where it should be. You do the job. You get a little bit faster, but it's still not good, right? You'll do a new job where you finally got pricing down pat and everything else, and you're doing 75 bucks an hour, man hour. You go to little old Doris's house who you've had forever. Uh, she nitpicks everything and walks with you. And then she wants to talk about her kids. And you're there for two hours longer because she's talkative. And then the whole thing's done. And you really only made like $30 an hour. Now, if you want to have that customer, which I have customers like that. But if you want to have that customer and you do value still giving them some happiness. I go to customers' houses when, and this is, by the way, I sold my company in September last year. I mean, it's it's gone, right? But I've had customers where I would go with the crew in a separate vehicle and just sit there and talk to the people while they worked. That doesn't mean that it is wrong, and I'm not telling you not to do that. But if you're going to people who nitpick everything, and it is not worth your time, effort, or headaches, you have to get rid of that customer. By getting rid of a customer, you're making $30 an hour on their nitpicky, I was, you know, listen, I, I, I appreciate everything we've done over the years. I just don't think that we're the right company for you. Um, you know, there's a lot of other companies in the area. Um, you know, let them down nice. Don't make them, you know, crash and burn. But by doing that, it strengthens your company. Every time you do that, it strengthen, strengthens your company. Think about a wall. If one of those bricks in the wall is cracked and broken, the whole wall then is now falling on that brick. If you could dig that brick out, put a new brick in nice and strong, the whole wall becomes stronger. That's a business. Your business is the wall. If you have a cracked brick, remove it. Fill it in with a good brick and the entire thing becomes stronger. Right? It's a crack in your windshield. The littlest crack means the entire windshield is compromised. That's what we're talking about. So when sometimes you're like, yeah, that person's a pain in the butt, but I've had them for four years. Like, I don't know. I just, whatever. I just deal with it. Thre strengthen your company. It will make you so much happier to do that. By the way, if you've ever fired a customer, tell me how you fired a customer and what the best way is. I like to do it lightly, just softly like, hey, I'm sorry. I just don't think we're a good match for you. I know there's a lot of other companies that you'd find uh, better suited for you. You know, I apologize it didn't work out. I always take the blame. 
right? I know that customers can be a pain in the butt and I let go customers who are in the pain in the butt. It's them, not me. But I don't tell them that because then guess what? Then they're angry, they've been angered, and now they're going to leave bad reviews. I'm not all about that life. Just not about bad reviews, right? Another thing that makes it a successful business in my eyes is that you have systems in place. I know. Here he goes talking about systems again. You have systems in place and your process can be duplicated. As simple as that. If you have systems for everything, you have a manual to your business. Everything is done the exact same way no matter who does it. That is success. That's why companies like, yes, of course, McDonald's, right, everything else, they have a playbook. They have a book that I could hand you and go, hey, guess what? Here's a book about McDonald's. Everything in this book tells you what's going on at McDonald's. That means that anybody can pick up that book and have a McDonald's running the exact same way if they follow the book as every other McDonald's anywhere. If you have that in your company, which it takes years, it takes a long, long time, but if you got something, systems in place, that is the strength of a company because your company is defined. If you're just rolling with the punches, every day it's let's see what happens, right? Again, you're by yourself right now. Think about that. Do you roll with the punches and figure it out as it goes? Or do you have a plan? An actual plan that you stick to? I'm telling you, 99% of guys or girls do not have plans. They don't have systems. They don't have all that in place. And the big thing, if you don't, you're letting fate happen. You're letting fate happen. What's the process of a rain day? Well, if it rains, we kind of play it by ear. Okay, what's the process uh, if spring comes early? Because this year, 2021, spring came way early for everyone. What happens when it comes early? I don't know, man. We just buckle up. Do you have employees and staff? When are your employees? When, when, do you, when did you hire? When did they get off of seasonal unemployment? Uh, what are your employees doing for gear and everything? Are you starting this season now because you don't have brand new shirts and things like are you still working on tr what is this whole thing having a plan having a system having something you could duplicate doesn't mean you have to duplicate it we're not starting franchises but what it is doing is it's telling us that we basically have the strength of a company build systems i would love Love to see somebody with a whole binder that has everything to do with when the garbage cans get emptied to when the new shirts get ordered. I mean, that is the strength of a company, at least in my eyes. And if you don't have something, put something in place and it will strengthen your company. Start the manual. Start the system. If you start it, you're stronger than you are without it. Right? Planning goes with that. You have to plan everything. So you got a marketing plan. You have a um, uh, uh, plan for um, your trucks. When do your trucks get in to get repaired or fixed or cleaned up or whatever? When do they get washed? When do new people get hired? When do you do your buying? Right? All of that stuff is planning. It's built into the systems. You have to do it. Are you a strong company because of your staff? Think about that. Yeah, maybe you have staff members sitting by you. Don't look them in the, don't look them in the eye. They'll know you're thinking about them or talking about them. Are they strong? Could they be stronger? Are you ABH? Are you always be hiring? If you're ABH, that's strength in a company. If you have strong guys and it takes a long time, I'm telling you, there's a lot of fish in the sea, but you know what else is a lot in the sea? There's a lot of trash in the sea. <laughs> there just is. When you catch things, I say every 10, 11 people you hire, one good one comes of it. Really. That one good one, oh my gosh, I send them every dollar, money, bonuses, back rubs, everything I could possibly do to keep them happy because they have to keep them on. Because I know I'm gonna got, I got 10 more crappies before I get one good one. Right? Ten more people I gotta fire for being stinky. That's only happened once. But if you're strong, your staff is strong. If your staff is staff is strong, your company is strong. 
Think about this. If you're not in the field, which I am not in the field, I have not purposely been in the field in years and years and years. When my staff goes out there, they're the ones people know. I talk to them on the phone, sure. I bid them over the phone, sure. They'll never meet me. Never, ever in real life. You think people care and they have to meet you and you're the reason that everybody... You're wrong. It doesn't matter you. Do they like you? Yeah, people probably do like you. But is it a game changer if you weren't there? No. That's something that people don't comprehend when they are small. Um, again, sorry if I just offended your thoughts, but that is absolutely the truth. Do people like you? Yes. Are people sad if you're not the one there? Yes. Are they going to go somewhere else because you're not there? Only if you have crappy staff. I can move out of the position. People go, oh, where's Jersey? Oh, he's now just sticking in the office, you know, with a text. But my name's Gary. I'd love to service you. Oh, ah, it's too bad. By the end of that job, if they love the number one person, my crew chief, they will love the company. They then go into that. Everybody new coming in does not know who I even am. I told the story, which I think is one of my favorite stories ever, as I got to his customer's house. We did him every four weeks. Every four weeks we did his house. He was a doctor, super nice guy, super old, um, but real nice guy, right? We did his house every four weeks. One time, this was when uh, we had the flu going through uh, our like offices, and we had like four techs out at one time. It was just, it was nuts. Anyway, one of the things I did was I went and did uh, jobs with uh, one of the guys in one of the days. And uh, he was the operations officer, but he was also the crew chief for that crew. I got there and the guy walks in and goes, oh, uh, everything looks great. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. He goes to hand me a check and he goes, you know what? Actually, no offense. I'm, I'm going to give this to Gary if that's okay. Oh, yeah, no, totally. I'm the owner of the company. He didn't want to give me the check. A, because he didn't know I was the owner of the company. Because he never really met me. But he trusted Gary. Gary was the number one. It was just, it was a great moment in my brain to be like, yes, that's exactly what should happen. So have a strong staff. A strong staff are those bricks we talked about. If they're strong, if you have a sucky staff member, it will make all of your, your whole staff be hate that one person, especially if they're not working in a team. If they're letting things, everybody else has to work harder to cover up for that guy and he still works there. Nobody is mad at that guy. They're mad at you because he's still there. I know hiring sucks. I know we're all too busy. We can't fire somebody. Don't let somebody have you by the short hairs. People would 1,000% rather take up that guy's work than sacrifice their normal day-to-day -day covering for that guy. I'm telling you. Have a strong staff and always be hiring. Another one's reviews. A strong company is somebody who has a ton of of five-star reviews. Bobby Walker, the man, the myth, the legend himself. 600. He just hit 600 five-star reviews. That company is invincible. In flipping invincible. When he has internet presence, somebody jumps on, and they're in Google, and they see he's got 600 five-star reviews. Are you kidding me? No one, not one person is hiring anybody else but him. They are just not because he's got more credibility. The other guy's got what? Okay, so 17 reviews. My rating's a 4.8. 17 reviews and one of them is not even a 5 star. Or I could go with this guy with 600 5 star reviews. At 600, you could have 10 1 star reviews and it would drop your, it would barely get you to a 4.9. Right? That's a strong company. That is an invincible company when it comes to web presence. Social justification. Have reviews. Reviews make you strong. If you don't have reviews, get them. Focus on getting them and make it happen. If you don't have reviews, go with Nice Job. Nice Job's a great company. Right? If you don't have the web presence for everything, get the web presence. Right? Do it. Uh, reviews make you strong. <sighs> I have to go back to what makes a successful company because we touched on it a bit, but you're not needed. Remember that. As a successful company, you, and no, I'm not saying you don't do anything. I'm saying you are not needed if your company is successful. Let me explain. 
I did not take a real vacation without doing a full shop shutdown for probably 10 years. If we did a vacation, I would take a, a week off and I would close the whole thing. I would take a long weekend during hunting. Rifle season was around Thanksgiving, which was a holiday, and we took it off anyway. And when I finally got the right people in, in place, he talked to me. And he's like, dude, take vacation whenever you want. This is your company. This is why we're here. And he talked me into it. When I could leave for a day, a week, a month if I wanted to, I could leave and come back and everything was fine. Oh, how was your trip? Good. Yeah. What happened while I was gone? Ah, not much, you know. This, this, and this, and this, and it was a great week. Cool. Did you guys uh, go get uh, free food on Friday? We always do free food on Friday. Yeah, yeah, we all went there. Cool. They didn't give you hassle? No, no, no. Everything is perfect. That means that everything you're doing in your company is extra. If you cannot leave because the whole world falls apart because you're the glue, you're doing it wrong. You are doing it wrong. Your job is your job. Your company is your company. The problem is, and I know this, I know a company, uh, the other, what, February? No, yes, February. Going somewhere for four days. Oh, we can't do that. It's, we're too busy. I, I cannot leave for four days. It's just, you can't leave for four days? Don't you have a computer? Can't you? I mean, if you're an owner-operator, I get that. We're not talking to you, right? Because if you leave, nothing gets done. We know that. But if you're not an owner-operator and everything can is so stuck on you, that means that you don't have systems in place. Because those systems could then be handed to somebody else. You could have a folder that's just your things. What do you do in a normal day? If I leave for four days, here it is. The four days are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be back on Friday. All of those days are in there. Look, in that folder, it tells you what I do on Monday, what I do on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's handed to somebody else. Now somebody else is doing it. That's a successful company to me. If you can leave and your company doesn't fall apart. If you're not needed, you've done something right. You're the owner of the company. The CEO of Coca-Cola could take a vacation anywhere he wants in his full rented island and private jet, and the whole company doesn't fall apart. Be that. Be that. Get yourself in a position that that is possible. Now, listen, if you're an owner-operator, or say you only have one guy, or one part-time, I'm not talking to you, I know. You'll get there with that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody who has staff around them. Office staff, techs, you have everything. Why are those people not doing everything that needs to get done? What you do should be extra. If you leave and sales don't get done, okay, well, that's not optimal, but a couple days without sales is fine. If you leave and the whole world falls apart and everybody loses their minds, something's wrong. By the way, if you'd like to send me angry emails, it's jersey at windowcleaner.com. Let me know how dumb I am for these, these thoughts. But this is what I think successful companies are. And finally, I want to say, notice that I didn't say anything about gross. And I didn't say anything about how many employees. Here's the biggest misconception conception we talked about at the beginning. The biggest, biggest misconception and by the way, just to step back, the you are not needed, that was my number one. But the biggest thing in the gross debate, gross is for everybody else. That's a bragging number, right? That's a uh, measuring contest. What's? Oh, yeah, we did uh, 300,000 last year. <laughs> Neat, right? That's a number for everybody else. The net is for you. That's your profit. The net is for you. The gross is for everybody else. So when somebody says, well, I think when I get to a million a year, that's success. When I get to five or when I get to a hundred thousand dollars, I'll be successful. Really? Because what's your profit on that? Can you leave? Or are you still like the most valuable thing, the glue that holds everything together and your whole company can't function without that? Right? Do you have strong stuff? There's so many things. I didn't mention gross because gross does not matter. It's a cool number. I love numbers. Man, you hit these milestones. Man, I did $100,000 last year. What? Never seen that kind of money. 
I did a million dollars last year. That's crazy. That's awesome. All those milestones and growth is great. You should track it, and it's all for everybody else, and it makes you feel warm and fuzzy, but they're not real numbers of strength in a company because I know companies who are doing $3 million a year that are not a strong company. They are a mess. They're a messy company that could fail any second. I know it. I know it. And the owner of the company doesn't care. So that's cool. Whatever. Do you. Do you, boo. That's what the kids are saying now. <laughs> it's so old. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many employees you have either. Right? I didn't have a lot of employees. My max employees count was 10, I think, including myself. Right? That's not a lot. There's companies out there doing 50 in the summer. It's not how many employees you have. That's a bragging one. That's why when you go to every conference you've ever gone to, somebody goes, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's Jersey. Nice to meet you. Nice. How many, how many employees are you running? How many trucks you got? That's just people. That is not for you. I could say I have one of my Gary, we'll say. One of my best operations officers I ever had. He ended up moving. That's why I didn't have him in the end. Otherwise, he would have been the one that bought my company. Greatest, just handle it. I'm going to take this off. I have never met. I have. I lied. I've met other companies that have a Gary, if you will. But I could go to somebody and somebody's got 10 employees. I could take my one employee, show them my one employee, and they'd be like, oh, dang. I don't have a Gary. So it doesn't matter the number of employees. It doesn't matter that. It matters strength. Profit first, strength in the company, systems, you got to be staffing and the staff has to be awesome. Your reviews have to be up there and you're not needed. Anyway, please do comment if you're watching on YouTube. Let's blow the comments up. Let's do like how many views? Let's get a lot of views and a lot of thumbs up. It takes a second. Click the thumbs up or the thumbs down if I suck. That's cool too. But do that. And more importantly, I want to be a rep. I want to be your guy. Right? Everybody's got a guy. I want to be your guy. Let me be your guy. 862-312-2026. Again, windowcleaner.com, the greatest place ever for window cleaning supplies. That's where I work. That's what I do. So let me put your order in. And if you haven't yet, please do. Take a moment right now. Go get your subscription to AWC. It's awcmag.com. awcmag.com. Subscribe to the magazine. Make my day. Make my day. Let's get some awesome, awesome subscriptions because this magazine, we pour uh, our hearts into just the pictures. Awesome window cleaning pictures. Look at this. There's Sorbo's article in this one. There's reviews. There's uh, awesome just like posters. It's just cool. And of course, as I almost knock everything over, there's the stickers. Where do you think I get the stickers from? Go do that. AWCMag.com. Again, my number 862-312-2026. That's it. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Go out there and be successful, but more importantly, be epic.